idea is what we call zero sum, um, or not zero sum, this is called grouping by factoring. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start it off in the same way. I'm just going to go ahead and use the formula here. I'm going to actually make an X or a diamond just like before. We're going to plot in here. So here, normally you would just put in the C value on top, but because our coefficient is greater than one, uh, in instances it could be less than one, you want to go ahead and multiply A times C. So I'm going to say this again. The number that you put on top is going to be the values of the coefficient of x squared, so 2 times negative 10. Okay? So the number that you're going to put on top of the diamond is going to be 2 times negative 10, or a times c. So in this case, it would be 2 times negative 10, which is equal to negative 20. The number you put on the bottom is the coefficient of the x value, or negative 1. Okay. Okay, so the coefficient of the just the x value is the number on the bottom. The number on top is the a value times the c value. Okay. So the number on top is the coefficient of x squared times the c value or the constant. So again, the number on top is the a value times the c value, and the number on the bottom is just the coefficient or the number in front of the b value. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to find two numbers when multiplied equals negative 20, but when added together equals negative 1. So you want to think about which numbers when multiplied equals negative 20, but when added together equals negative 1. Does anyone have an idea for that? Okay. So negative 5 and positive 4, let's check this out. So when you add them together, they equal negative 1. When you multiply them, they equal negative 20. There you go. So that is the factors we're going to use. Okay. So this part is the in intuitive part. We're going to actually write it as 0 equals 2x squared. We're going to use this 4, and we're going to change it to plus 4x. We're going to take this negative 5. We're going to change it to negative 5x minus 10. The reason I write it in this order is because 4 is, div is divisible by 2, and 5 is divisible by 10. So what I'm doing right now is I'm specifically grouping them with the, the number that they're divisible by. The reason I can write negative 5x and positive 4x is because if I just isolate this part, you can see here that negative x is equal to positive 4x minus 5x. And if you actually think back to the shapes, we actually form the same thing. So what's going to happen here is we're going to find the greatest common factor between these, which is 2x. We get x plus 2, and then we want to find the greatest common factor between negative 5x and negative 10, and we get negative 5 divides into x plus 2. Okay. So again, this second method, I don't expect many of you to use this. This is more intuitive. But this will actually come into play next chapter. So, oh sorry, this is... All right, sorry. Yeah, it should be negative 5, not negative 5x. Sorry, negative 5, not negative 5x. Okay. So the next thing is that we can combine the 2x and negative 5 because both of them are multiplying the same thing. So the next thing that happens is that we can combine 2x and negative 5 because they're multiplying the same thing. So because they are multiplying the same thing, we can combine it as 2x minus 5 times x plus 2 equals 0. If this looks familiar, it should, because if you look at how we solved it before, we actually have the same factors. So you can see by solving it the second method, we get the same factors. We get the same factors. Okay, okay so that's it for method 2. We would go ahead and 
solve this, we would solve for the zeros, and then we would get our answer.